Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from anthonymorganti.com. This is episode seven of Questions and Answers. In this episode, I'll be answering five Lightroom related questions. We're gonna jump right into it. Our first question is from Ahmad. He asks, I have a 20 page book in Lightroom. If I export it, then later go back and edit one page. Can I export that single page or do I have to again export the entire book? You'll have to export the entire book. And for those of you not familiar with the book module of Lightroom, it's over here, of course. And once you complete a book in it, you could do a couple things with your book. If you look at the bottom of the right hand panel, you'll see there's a button, send book to Blurb. And Blurb is a company that will print the book for you. What Mod is referring to though, is at the bottom of the left hand panel export book to PDF. Unfortunately, there's no way to select specific pages to export or even a single page. It's going to do the entire book every time. So unfortunately, uh, you can't. You have to export the whole book uh, every single time. The next question is from Dan. Now, I don't get a lot of questions about the slideshow module in Lightroom, but the few questions I do get are this question. When creating a slideshow, can you have each slide on for varying lengths of time? Unfortunately, again, this is no. Uh, this is a feature that I wish Adobe would implement because it is available on other slideshow making programs. And I can't see why they don't implement it. If you go in the slideshow module, it kind of implies you can. And this is where the confusion arises. If you look at the right hand panel at the bottom, it has playback slideshow mode automatic and it has slide length and it kind of like looks like you could go in here and put let's say five seconds uh, for a slide length and a crossfade at 2.5 seconds that's the time the slide uh, fades in and fades out to the next slide but then you could click on another slide and do it again do it again well it doesn't it's really for the whole document and there's no way to individualize that per slide I like I would like it to do it because often when I create a slideshow, uh, one of my slides or more may have text in it, and I need that slide to be on longer so that people could read the text. And you just can't. And and it looks like you can. They has a manual button here, and there's nothing, no way to do it there. So again, that is a feature I hope Adobe implements someday because it really needs it. It really. Uh, makes their slideshow very really unusable for many people. Next question is from Walker. When I use the brush in Lightroom, I often but not always get little dots or flakes appearing in the brush strokes. I have opacity and flow all the way up. Is that causing it? No. Uh, we're going to go to this image here and I'm just going to zoom in, just make it more obvious, and we'll get the brush. What is causing it is auto mask. Right now you'll see I have flow and density all the way up and I'm going to check Auto mask, auto mask so it's implemented and I'm just going to do a brush stroke across this image and you can see what Walker's talking about see these flecks in here and it's like spots the brush missed that's auto mask basically doing what it does uh, there's no way around that when you have that checked if you uh, take that checkbox away and turn auto mask off you could see that the brush stroke is much more solid so in a situation where you have to have auto mask checked, be aware that you'll often get these little flex and spots. There's nothing you could do about that. So we're going to reset that. Um, so, you know, sorry about that, Walker. Next question is from Rick. You've taught to hold the Alt key in when you use masking in the detail panel for sharpening. I've noticed that if you hold in the Alt key for the other sliders, the screen changes as well. Can you explain what that is all about? Sure. Let's go back to our penguin picture. And what Rick is talking about is the detail tab. I've taught when you have sharpening on that often when you turn sharpening up, you'll get a little noise. And the noise is usually very prominent in a landscape image that has an expansive sky. And there really is no need to sharpen the sky. So you'd like to use masking to mask out that part. And to use the masking slider, you just don't have to come in here and willy-nilly move the slider around. If you hold the Alt or Option key in, it's Alt if you have a PC option, if you have a Mac, and click on that, the screen turns white. And as you move the slider to the right, whatever is black is not being sharpened, and whatever is white is being sharpened. So this works great 
for a landscape image, you could turn sharpening up considerably. And because you're, it will cause will often cause noise to appear in the sky, you could use that masking slider so you're not sharpening the sky and that noise won't appear. What he's talking about, though, is he's held that Alt or Option key in on the other sliders as well. And if you look at the Amount slider, if I hold that Alt or Option key in, then click on the slider, the screen turns black and white. All that is doing, it's, it's some people find it easier to sharpen a black and white image. Once the color info is missing, it's easier to sharpen a black and white image. Personally, it doesn't seem to help me much, but it may help you, so do that. Now, radius and detail is a little different. When you press that alter option key in and click on those, the screen turns gray and you get this kind of weird uh, look to it. This, again, is hopefully can help you set the radius better and or set the detail better. For me, that doesn't help at all, but maybe it does for you and you have to experiment with it. Similarly, with luminance, it'll turn the screen black and white and with the other sliders, too. It just turns the screen black and white, I believe, on all of them. Color it turns it black and white. Nope, color doesn't do anything. So let's see if it does on detail. So you have to experiment. So the color sliders, it seems, these three, it, holding the ultra option key doesn't do anything. And with the uh, contrast detail luminance sliders under noise reduction, it creates a black and white image to help you better implement those sliders or apply those sliders and sharpening as you saw what I did with those. One thing I'll add real quick too, you might want to experiment with this Alt Option key with other sliders as well. Like in the basic panel, I've taught how to get a good white and black point is to hold that Alt or Option key in and you could get a white and black point. That also works with the highlights slider, the shadow slider, uh, the exposure slider, so you could come in and try this out with different sliders and see what it does. In most cases, most people seem to be under agreement that it helps most with the masking slider that is in the sharpening panel or sharpening tab part of the detail tab, and it helps most with the whites and the black slider. Other than that, it's you know it's up to you. But try it. Maybe you'll find different ways that holding that alter option key will really help you process your image. All right, our last question is from Curtis. I used to be able to reorder images directly on the film strip. Suddenly I'm getting this error. Quote, the currently selected source does not support custom order. Close quote. Why? Okay, what is happening here is when you import images and you import them to a specific folder, Lightroom doesn't make that folder active. It actually goes somewhere else. And let me try to explain it by showing you. I've recently imported these slides. And I put them in a collection down here. But when I imported them, it didn't go to the folder the slides were in, which is right here. It didn't go there. It went to here, where it says Previous Import. That's under the Catalog tab. So every time you import images, you'll end up at this location called Previous Import. When you're here and you try to move things around by dragging them around the film strip, you'll get this error. The currently selected source does not support custom order. You'd have to go down to the actual folder the images are in. And then you could drag them around on the film strip and move them into a different order. Another thing that you'll find will happen is if you're in this previous import folder, I'm going to call it a folder for lack of a better term, but if you're there and you create a panorama or you merge some images into an HDR, it will always place it at the end. And that sometimes is annoying, uh, especially let's say you have 500 images you just imported and Somewhere, you know, 96 and 97 and 98, you merged into a panorama, and all of a sudden, your panorama is, the finished panorama is way down at the end of the film strip, and your uh, component images are further up in the uh, film strip, and you can't slide them around. You can't reorder them here, because you'll get this error. 
that's when you you really have to go to the exact folder that contains the images and when you do you'll find that that panorama you just created will be right next to its component uh, images so actually that's a question I get now and then that's more common than you might think that people don't realize you're in this previous import folder and you can't move things around in a custom way so that's it for this episode of questions and answers thank you everyone that watches my videos. I truly, truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.